All right, so let's talk about getting your financial house in order. And when I'm talking about your financial house, I'm not talking about saving for retirement or saving for your kid's college education or to fund traveling around the world or whatever your dreams, um, whatever your dreams are, not funding those things. I'm talking about just your household, funding your actual life. Because life is happening right now. It's not just going to happen in the future. It's happening right now in the present. And so many folks find themselves without enough money, without enough money to be able to fund their current life and their current lifestyle. And so we're going to be talking about getting your financial house, the household that you currently have, in order. And that involves three things. The first thing is to use a budget. Not just not just create the budget, but actually use it. Stick to it. How you create your budget, what categories you include in your budget, all of that is a totally 100% up to you. The only thing is, is that you just have to create it and then stick to it. I'm a huge fan of the zero balance budget, which means that you give every single dollar of income that you earn a job. Whatever that job may be, you assign it a job and a duty. So whether that's saving money, that's paying off debt, you know, that's putting money towards retirement, you know, to fund your dreams of traveling the world, whatever it may be, you are assigning every single dollar that you earn a job. And by signing every single dollar a job, you end up with a zero balance after you take your income minus your expenses. And that is called a zero balance budget. It just simply means that every single dollar that you earn is going somewhere. So it's either funding your future self, it's funding your current self, or it's helping to pay off debt, paying off your your past self, so to speak. So make your money work for you by not only creating a budget, but also sticking to that budget because that's the hard part is the sticking part. The second thing that you have to do in order to get your financial household in order is to build an emergency fund. If you have no idea what emergency fund is, this is what you are going to need in case of, you know, ca- catastrophic events happen in your life. So the breadwinner in the family loses their job, um, your spouse, something unfortunate happens to your spouse and they can't go to work anymore or you know, they pass away, um, anything like that, anything catastrophic that could possibly happen to your household, your emergency fund is there as your safety net. Now, emergency fund, this is not meant to fund your lucrative lifestyle, your your fun, money, nothing like that. It's not meant to fund that. It is meant to fund your bare bones budget, meaning what you need to survive. Not necessarily thrive, but survive. So keeping a roof over your head, food on the table, you know, gas in your car or to pay for your subway fare, your bus fare, um, however you get to work. Those things. That is what the emergency fund is there for. It is not there so you can go and have brunch every Sunday with your best friends. That's not what emergency fund is for. It is meant to protect you and your family, your household, in the event of a true emergency. So when it comes to an emergency fund, you're going to need to have at least three to six months worth of living expenses. Again, your bare bones budget, not the fun stuff. That that's not included in this. Just the just the stuff that you need to survive. You know, utilities, insurance, um, the gas in your car, transportation costs, those types of things, um, and and of course food. Those would be your bare bones expenses, your living expenses that you would want to have saved up. Um, you would want to have three to six months saved up in your emergency fund in case of an actual emergency. And the third thing that you need to get your financial house in order is to eliminate debt. And I'm talking about debt that, that doesn't include the mortgage, but you know your consumer debt, your credit cards, your student loans, your car loans, personal loans, those types of loans, getting those completely paid off, eliminating that debt. Once you've done these three things, you will experience so much breathing room within your budget that it makes saving for retirement, paying off the house early, saving to travel the world, saving for your kids' college educations, you know, giving without, you know, being able to give like you never did before. Those types of things, it makes doing those things so much easier. It's less stressful. You can do it you know, generously and joyfully. You can do these things. You can save for these types of things. It's incredible. When you free up that type of room in your budget by eliminating debt and when, you, and when you have a solid emergency fund in place to have that safety net, that cushion there, 
It's incredible the things that you can do when you actually live life by a budget. So I encourage you, if you don't already, you know, have a budget and sticking to a budget, living life by a budget, that you make that a priority today because that is the first step to getting your financial house in order. The next step is to build that emergency fund. So once you've, you know, set the budget and you're sticking to the budget, how much money from that budget can you set aside every week or every month towards an emergency fund? So you can build three to six months worth of living expenses into your emergency fund. And then once you've got started on building that emergency fund, start eliminating your debt. Take the smallest debt and work up to the largest debt. It doesn't matter how you want to attack this. Just strategize and attack paying off your debt. You know, free up that room in your budget because building an emergency fund is going to happen a whole lot faster if you don't have a whole lot of debt hanging over your head. So keep going and get your financial house in order. 